Hey guys, this is Courtney from Mills Bloom. Today we are going to look at what to look at in an astrology chart in order to understand somebody's love life and kind of what you might expect from their love life. So I pulled out two sisters, Venus and Serena Williams. I kind of want to watch the documentary that came out on them um, recently because I don't actually know a lot about them, but I did a little bit of research before this reading to kind of get an understanding of where their love life is at and why they are different, even though they were raised in the same household. Um, obviously, we are all born with our own unique birth charts, which gives us a predisposition to certain tendencies in relationships. Oftentimes, what I see is that these things improve with age. So sometimes I see difficult placements for relationships that may prove challenging for years. And then as someone gets older, they learn how to best work with this energy. And then they can find a more optimum kind of version of a relationship that fits that same energy. Whereas before they might have found a relationship that was kind of the lower end of the spectrum or um, the shadow of that of that planet essentially represented in their chart. So let's go ahead and dive in. This is Venus Williams chart. And when I'm looking at somebody's relationships, there are two main factors that I want to look at, or sorry, three main factors that I want to look at. Obviously, you want to take the chart as a whole. You want to get their family history, get a sense of their identity, their career, all these things are going to have an impact, but we're just going to primarily look at relationships right now. So when looking at a relationship, the very first factor that I consider is their personal relationship planet. So everyone has Venus, which is a planet that signifies relationships in the chart. And so we all have a Venus to look at, and that is one of the points I consider. But even more important to that is our personal relationship planet, which is going to be the planet that rules the seventh house of partnership. And so in order to find out which planet rules this house or is in charge of this house, watches after it, you know, kind of is like the teacher at the front of the classroom of this house. So in order to find which planet rules it, we're going to look at the sign that starts the house that's on the seventh house cusp, which is Aries. So for her, Whichever planet is in charge of the sign of Aries is going to be in charge of her relationships. So if you don't already know, um, you can also look this up online, but each planet is essentially in charge of one or two signs. So I'll just go over them really quickly. Um, so for Aries, we have Mars, which we can see here, and we're, we're going to get to that in a second. For Taurus, we have Venus. For Gemini, we have uh, Mercury. And for Cancer, we have the Moon. For Leo, we have the Sun. For Virgo, we have uh, Mercury. For Libra, we have Venus again. So you'll notice that Venus and Mercury rule two signs. For um, Scorpio, we can use a traditional ruler, which is Mars. So both Aries and Scorpio are ruled by Mars. Or you can look at modern rulers and take a look at Pluto. So we can also look at that, but I mostly consider the traditional ruler. For Sagittarius, we're going to look to Jupiter. For Capricorn, Saturn. For Aquarius, um, we'll also look at Saturn as the traditional ruler, or the modern one would be Uranus. And then lastly, Pisces, which would be Jupiter or the modern one would be Neptune. So because the outer planets weren't discovered until, you know, more, more recently than when astrology was first founded, people, uh, ancient astrologers would use the, only the visible planets that I mentioned. Okay, so her relationship planet is going to be Mars, which is the ruler of Aries. So we're going to locate Mars in her chart. And we're going to see what sign it's in. We're going to see what house it's in. We're going to see what aspects it's making to other planets, and especially this conjunction with Saturn. And that's going to give us a huge idea about her relationship patterns and maybe her luck in love versus maybe delays or hardships in love, maybe certain people she might attract and experiences that she might have. So first of all, just by seeing that she has Aries on the seventh house cusp, we can see that she may be attracted to people who are forward, who are the ones who might take kind of the first step. Um, that might not always be the case, but people who are generally going to be confident, 
who are courageous and unafraid um, to kind of either go after her or at least go after what they want. And she may attract people who uh, kind of fall quickly in love or who are somewhat impulsive in relationships or even just as a personality. She could also be attracted to other athletes because Aries is a sign that is ruled by Mars, which is a planet related to competition and athleticism. So I see a lot of athletes with the strong Mars. So we can see that she might attract those people as well as bring some of that energy into her partnership dynamic. So she might be a little bit competitive with her partner. She might want someone who can stand toe to toe. She might get a little bit argumentative from time to time, get a little bit heated, and maybe she likes that passion and, and looks for that in a partner. But even more importantly, we can see that Mars is in the sign of Virgo with Saturn here. So her relationship planet in the sign of Virgo can indicate that she is extremely attentive to her partners. Virgos tend to be observant and attentive to the ones that they love, those around them, those that they care about. But there can be a perfectionistic and critical side of Virgo as well. And because there's already this little bit of argumentative side here with Mars and Aries and even Saturn, um, there can be this sort of criticalness and judgmental side that might come through in her relationships. And especially because Mars is a divisive planet, it's the opposite of what we typically want in relationships. It's the planet of war, of fighting, of conflict. And then on top of that, Saturn is pouring its influence into her relationship planet, which is also a planet of endings and division, of also commitment and devotion, but usually from a place of duty and responsibility. So there can be this, this sense of heaviness or weightedness to her relationships, where she might show up as a perfectionistic kind of person, work super hard, but is also really demanding and will expect the same from her partners. And if they don't live up to that, I could see her being critical or judgmental or even cold if her Mars turned more into a Saturn influence. The other aspect that Saturn is going to pour into Mars or her relationship planet is a sense of struggle or hardship or delay in achieving a relationship or and or differences in age. And this is very common when I see Saturn with the relationship planet or in the seventh house, you will see differences in age. Either you're dating someone much older or much younger. And I know that Venus did date someone who I believe was like eight years her younger. Um, so we can see this come up with her relationship planet, why she might be attracted to these age differences, as well as the fact that she's currently single. And she did tell, I think a magazine article, that she kind of perceived herself as undateable and she just really enjoyed her freedom and didn't really want to be, you know, defined or looking for a relationship. Like she just basically is happy being alone, being by herself. Um, and sometimes Saturn can give that effect. It can make us, first of all, it can make us fearful of relationships because Saturn tends to bring out fears and insecurities. So in on one hand, she might not have a partnership because there is quite a bit of fear there and being alone feels better. Also, what I often see with Saturn in the 12th house um, in relationship planet in the 12th house could maybe indicate this as well, but there tends to be an isolating factor where people can self-isolate or they like to be alone a lot. And sometimes they do feel lonely, but it's like this pattern where they kind of recreate this for themselves. Like I feel lonely, but I also like being alone and I make, you know, I don't make plans. So it's like they kind of feed into this. So there is a sense of independence. Um, but Saturn tends to delay things in general. So it's a planet associated with time. And so we can see with Mars here that it's very likely that if she does find a dedicated partnership, it might take her a little bit more time. So these are all factors that we can consider with Saturn on her Mars, and she tends to represent many of them, but maybe somebody else will just represent one or two of these factors. Another thing to consider is that this is the 12th house. So the 12th house is a hidden house, it's generally considered a challenging house or a quote unquote bad house in traditional astrology. And it's usually where we have like loss and misfortune come upon us. Um, there are good things about the 12th house as well, but sometimes the 12th house can be challenging. 
um, mostly because whatever planets are here are ten tend to be operating within the unconscious mind. So they're very prevalent in our lives, but they're usually not totally something that we have awareness or control over. So they just kind of spill out into our lives um, without our full recognition of them. And so she may, again, have some fears around relationships or, um, yeah, just basically some challenges around relationships that she's not even really full, fully aware of. She might have some kind of karma or internal blockages that she hasn't necessarily worked on. And because of that, it might come out in a way of like, well, I'm really, I feel really great being free. And I'm not saying that she doesn't feel that way. I think primarily what I'm saying is that there are some challenges here that she's meant to work through in this lifetime and she might not have full access or awareness to them for her to work on them at all times. Um, but this can get better with time, with age, with transits. Uh, so it's it's our chart is never static. It's never like a death sentence. You're not just set up for failure or for success entirely. Um, but there, the chart does tend to lean in a certain direction and then we have to develop the tools to work with what we've been given. So we can see that she's likely going to have delays or restrictions or hardships in terms of finding a partner or at the very least she's going to be very dedicated once she does find a partner. So let's see what other aspects Mars has in this chart. So Mars is also making a square to Neptune and trining Chiron. So and sex selling her midheaven, which is more about her career. So I'm not going to go into that. But um, the square to Neptune in the third house would be a little bit concerning to me when I see relationship planet in a harsh aspect, squares, oppositions, even conjunctions with Neptune, because it can tend to lead someone to idealize within a relationship. So she can be blinded by love. Um, she may be susceptible to you know, someone who says really nice things. Although Saturn is here, which does add a little bit of, of wisdom and discernment to the picture that's going to really help this Neptune. But Neptune is also squaring Saturn. So there's part of her that wants to believe what this person is saying. There's part of her that wants to maybe be a romantic in some senses, um, or at the very least, this Neptune energy can leap lead to depleted energy um, because Mars is a very strong ambition, drive, passion, and source of energy. And Neptune tends to leak energy. Um, it wants us to go within, which is a, a mystical process, um, which doesn't require the body necessarily. So Neptune in harsh contact with Mars can, again, kind of take away some of the drive maybe to achieve this like status of a relationship. Um, it can also, once she's in a relationship, again, make her kind of susceptible to an illusion, a fantasy, or something that's not all it's cracked up to be. And then she may feel a sense of disappointment or disillusionment as the person appears different than maybe they originally said they were. And so also when I say see a relationship plan at the 12th house, this can also lead to some sense of fantasy. But again, Saturn here is going to regulate that a little bit. But with a planet in the 12th house, like like Venus or your relationship planet, it can mean that you may have this like dreaminess um, around a relationship. And sometimes it's not always realistic and grounded in what's happening. And then on top of that, her Mars is making a trine to Chiron, um, which doesn't have to be bad, but there can be some insecurities, especially with Chiron in the 8th house, that really pull into her relationship dynamics. Um, but there can also be great healing from it as well because it's a trine. So not the worst thing, not the best thing to have in relationships. Her Mars is also making a square to Venus. And we're going to look at her sister's chart in just a second. But Mars making a square to Venus is something they both share. So this is what I would consider a little bit of a combative energy within the love life, but also quite stirring and passionate. So whenever we see this transit, this is something that whenever we see in someone's chart or even as a transit that can make someone m more sexual, that can create, again, this kind of um, passion and drive that comes from a little bit of like love-hate, if that makes sense. So um, 
it's not the kind of pure love that you have for your child. It's like this, this aggressive kind of love, if that makes sense. <laughs> so this is going to be somebody who maybe is more prone to getting angry. Um, although with Saturn here, this could really restrict her anger significantly. So this might be actually something that she feels but represses, actually. Um, I've also seen, and this is kind of personal for her, but I've also seen Saturn and Mars together um, be highly sexual, but like in a different way where you're interested more so in um, like dominance and, you know, who has, who has the upper hand here. So maybe some more kind of like kinky things like that. Um, so I could definitely see that, especially with this aspect to Venus, I could definitely see her maybe having some of those unique um, interests that not everyone always has. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this can make someone a little bit more fiery, but with Saturn here and in being in the 12th house, it can also kind of repress that side of herself. So there's this passion and this drive, but it also may be kind of constricted. And so I'd be very curious to see how this plays out for her on a personal level. So I don't want to speak too much into it because this is one of those things that I'd have to talk to the client about to see how this manifests in their life because the energy is conflicting in the chart. Um, and so it depends on their level of consciousness how it will manifest. So that's her relationship planet. The other thing that we're going to look at is Venus as well as any planets in the seventh house. She doesn't have any here, so we're just going to skip that one. But her sister does, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. So as I mentioned, we also want to look at Venus. So what is going on with her natal Venus? It is retrograde. It is combust the sun, so right next to the sun, blinded by the sun. And it's in the sign of Gemini, and it's opposite Neptune. And so um, as well as squaring Saturn, so... Um, squaring Mars, all the things that I just mentioned. So again, this can indicate delays with the square to Saturn, delays in relationships, opposite Neptune. This is again another indicator that she could be prone to fantasy, to deception, to illusion um, within a relationship dynamic where she might project onto the partner um, or be lied to or vice versa. She could be the one who does that as well. Her, her Venus is also being blinded by the sun, so she may not fully see her relationships for what they are. On top of this, the sun is representing the career. And so there is a stronger focus on career than relationships. It over dominates or overpowers her desire for connection. On top of this, her Venus is retrograde, which I do see, see tends to be rather difficult when you are younger. I don't know necessarily that this is something that remains difficult, um, but Venus retrograde, because it's not as common um, as other retrogrades like Mercury, for example, or the outer planets, it can be really felt within the chart um, as essentially having to really learn about people, um, really learn to understand kind of the needs of others or what people are trying to say to you. And um, it basically can create challenges in creating connections because there's more learning that has to be done and sometimes there can be more insecurities around relating and relationships in general that have to be overcome in order for you to feel connected supported and loved and so the retrograde aspect is a little bit challenging on top of this it's an immutable sign like gemini which has a little bit of a wandering eye that's not always going to be the case um i think that for her especially you, you need to look at the whole chart but if you see a lot of this kind of mutable energy and not very much commitment energy, it can indicate like not necessarily wanting to settle down. Um, and so what I see with her is maybe she's not somebody who wants to settle down until she finds with Mars and Saturn someone that she can take very seriously. So something that she is 110% about, very invested in. And so she seems like she's going to be somebody who wants to have fun you know, to play. She's still learning a lot in relationships. Um, she wants to maybe just enjoy herself. And then if there's somebody who really catches her eye, I can see her being an all in type of person. So that's the kind of dynamic I'm seeing in her chart. So she's definitely somebody who is going to find love later in life. And she may be someone who never really finds her person. Um, 
you know, you never really know, right? Your your chart isn't going to full on tell you. You're never going to be in a relationship. Um, but it will tell you, hey, you have maybe a few more chapters of your life um, before you get to that stage. Or maybe with the, the, the sun dominating Venus, you might always be a little bit more focused on your career. Um, or you might with Saturn just have delays until you're interested in that part of your life. So um, very interesting to consider her chart. Now we're going to go to her sister's chart and look at those same three things. So we're looking at Serena Williams now, who has her um, seventh house in the sign of Scorpio, which is going to, again, kind of illustrate what, what partners she will attract. Um, the planets in the seventh house as well kind of indicate parts of us this is going to this is going to depend on the person as well and kind of where they are in their their life path and how much of how aware they are of themselves. But oftentimes plants in the 7th house can actually be things that we are projecting that we don't fully own within ourselves that we are looking for in a partner. And um, that's again not always the case, but it's oftentimes going to describe the kind of people we're looking for. Venus, the planet of relationships in the 7th house is very good. Um, she does have Uranus here as well, which is a little, little bit challenging sometimes. Um, it doesn't have to be challenging, but at, it can present, uh, you just, you're going to have to adapt or you're going to attract a very Uranian type of partner. So, um, we're going to get to that later though. So she has already this benefit of Venus in the seventh house. Um, but let's look first at the most important part, which is the ruler of Scorpio. And I'm going to look at Mars for this because that is the traditional ruler of Scorpio. So both women have Mars as their personal relationship planet. Her Mars is in a fire sign in Leo. Mars is a fiery planet. When it's in a sign of like Leo, where it's also fiery, it feels confident. It feels sexy. It feels like it's the dazzling star of the show. And so you can see here that her relationship planet is doing really well. Um, on top of this, her relationship planet is in the fifth house. If you put this in whole sign, it's in the fourth house. Regardless, both are positive houses. Um, both are tend to be like benevolent in nature or sensitive and giving. The fifth house is is quite passionate. It's where we are already linking up with romantic or dating love, and the seventh house is where we commit to that love. So we can see that she's very much interested in relationships. The fifth house is also a house of children. So there's this deep connection here with partnership and children. And we know that she did retire or take a step back to focus on her family life and her child or children. I think, I know she has one, I don't know if she has another. So we can see already why that's super important for her. Mars is also a planet of passion. And in this fiery sign, we can see that she is an extremely passionate person. And this will definitely come out in her sex life and her relationship with her children and her husband. Um, so we can see already that her Mars, even though they have the same relationship planet, her Mars is also already a little bit stronger and um, functioning in a more Martian proper way. She also, as I mentioned, has Mars making a square to Venus. So Mars square Venus, as I talked about, can make one a little bit fiery in love. So this is where I see, because her Mars is not suppressed at all, I can see her maybe having a little bit more of a temper. I can see her having like this, you know, passionate sex life, but also kind of maybe a little bit edgy at times with how she chooses to speak, especially because Pluto and Mercury are quite close. She might have a biting tongue at times or be impatient at the very least. And again, bringing some of this kind of competitive nature to her relationships, especially with Scorpio here as well, she might um, attract a relationship in which there is some kind of like competitive draw to each other. Um, and as well with a Scorpio on her descendant, attracting a partner that um, there may be some power dynamics in the relationship, like one person being um, just more influential, which in this case is probably her. Um, or with Scorpio, there can be a desire for intense intimacy. So a lot of privacy and deep connection um, that that basically not everyone is going to be privy to. So we can see that she's got this passionate kind of love in relationships and for children. Um, the other thing that we would consider would be Venus as well as planets in the seventh house, which happens to be Venus. So Venus is in the sign of Scorpio. 
Venus is in detriment in the sign of Scorpio, which es essentially means that Venus wants to connect and socialize and create harmony between people, but Scorpio can be rather private, can be suspicious of others, hold themselves back. So Venus doesn't necessarily like to be in this sign. However, it is strengthened being in the seventh house of marriage and partnerships. Um, almost always when I see someone with the Venus in the seventh house, unless there's a lot of other stuff going on, they tend to have very committed, long-lasting relationships. They tend to be happy in love um, and just very much fulfilled. And it's oftentimes maybe because they are attracting a partner that has Venusian qualities, that is very committed, that is very private in the sign of Scorpio, that is very um, dedicated to that to that individual person. Um, so we can see that her partner is likely very, very devoted to her. Venus is also opposite Chiron, so there can be maybe some, um, it's kind of, it's a little bit of far of an orb. So um, there can be maybe some pain around like femininity. Um, yeah, I'm not going to go super into that because it is a wide orb, so she might not really feel that at all. The other thing I want to mention is her Uranus in the seventh house. So Uranus, as I mentioned, can be a little challenging sometimes, but it's really more so challenging for people who um, are playing out maybe the more shadow side of Uranus or who are not adaptive or adaptable. So Uranus is going to indicate having a partner that likely needs a lot of freedom. They're going to have their own life and their own way of being. Maybe you have a unique kind of relationship. I've seen somebody with... Um, you know, Venus in opposition to Uranus who had an open relationship or, you know, having Venus or having Uranus in seventh house, maybe attracting partners who are sometimes kind of like skittish, like they, they, um, they're there one minute and then they're like, oh no, I need more space. And then they kind of run off like unavailable partners. However, because she has Venus here, that's going to really change the name of the game. And I'm going to mention, um, also she has, Mars, sorry, I forgot to mention this. Mars making a sextile to Jupiter. This is one of the reasons, Venus in the seventh house and Mars sextile Jupiter, this is one of the reasons why she has such a successful marriage and love life while her sister does not. Um, and I hate to say it like that because I'm not saying she doesn't have that potential, but Serena is going to have an easier time because for Venus, her Mars was with Saturn, which is another malefic that delays and creates hardships in relationships. Serena has the opposite. She has a benefic, a very positive, uplifting, abundant, opportunistic planet like Jupiter, which creates a lot of optimism, faith, support from the universe. And so it is literally coming in here and lifting up her relationship planet and giving her the potential to grow significantly in a partner and to maybe attract a partner who is doing well in life, can lift her up in life. Um, and her current husband actually was the founder of Reddit and is very successful, has done well for himself financially, is a very supportive partner, doesn't mind being in her limelight even though he has success of his own. Um, and so we can see this really being supported by Jupiter and Venus in the seventh. We can also see the tech aspect coming in with Uranus. And this is where I think the unique aspect of Uranus, the progressive, eccentric, kind of two steps ahead aspect of Uranus is coming into play because Uranus in the seventh house is going to indicate that she has a partner who either needs a unique type of relationship and lots of freedom, maybe lots of change or space, um, just a different kind of dynamic, maybe even sometimes um, not like not heterosexual. So maybe you're um, interested in the same sex, that type of thing. So that can be Uranus. Also though, Uranus has to do with technology. And so her husband, um, as I mentioned, was a founder of Reddit. And so we can see this whole aspect of technology being this descriptor of him. The other thing I will mention is that Uranus can create the sense of being different or not fully belonging. And her husband was born to two German parents. So he was already parents, uh, he already had was a ch child of immigrants. So I think he already may have felt a little bit of this um, friction between being American, but also not really be being fully American. You know, he's also German and his gr grandparents were Armenian and they had to flee because of the genocide happening there. So there was this kind of storyline around um, not having a sense of belonging, not having a homeland, 
not fully integrating or being welcome. And so I think that he carries this within his DNA in a, in a large sense. And I think that you can see that represented in her partnership here with Uranus in her seventh house of partners. So this is how I analyze relationships. I know I did that fast, but um, you guys can do this for yourselves. Or if you want to book a reading for something like this, you can check that out in the description box down below. But just to recap, we're going to look at the planet that rules the seventh house cusp what sign it's in, what house it's in, and especially what aspects it makes to other planets, as well as Venus, what's going on with Venus. Is it strong in a home sign like Taurus or Libra? Or is it struggling in a sign like Scorpio, for example? Um, and then we want to look at any planets in the seventh house to describe what you might attract in a partner, what you might project onto them, what might come up in your relationship, and what you maybe need to integrate more within yourself. So these are the elements I'm saying. I hope that you guys enjoy this. If so, please like and comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe, and I hope you have a beautiful day. Bye!